Welcome to this conversation with our host today, Professor Dr. Peter Zeck, founder and CEO of the Red Dot Design Award, and his distinguished guest, Mr. Flavio Manzoni, Senior Vice President for Design at Ferrari. Flavio, you have had the honor in 2019 to have been awarded the distinguished title and accolade of Red Dot Design Team of the Year 2019. And we speak with you at the point of handing over the baton to a new team. Um, and as you know, the Red Dot Design Team of the Year title is unique in that it celebrates not just the one person, but the whole design team. I am Michael Thompson of Design Connect London. And I think it would be good if I offered viewers uh, a brief condensed history of your journey, Flavio, um, uh, to, to where you are today. And I think I'm right in saying that you dreamt as a child of a career in the car industry. Although I think probably then you were assuming that cars would be flying objects by the start of the new millennium. Anyway, you went and studied architecture in Florence with a major in industrial design, and you moved to Lancia in 1993. And within three years, you became the director of interiors. Then in 1999, you moved to Barcelona, where you spent two years at SEAT, working, for example, on the Altea and the Leon. And 2001 saw you returning to Lancia as design director and winning with the Lancia Fulvia, the European Automotive Design Award in 2003. Yeah. In 2004, as design director for Fiat and Lancia, you brought your talent, uh, you brought your talent and magic, for example, to the new Cinquecento, which was, is known to millions. In 2006, you became director of creative design for Volkswagen Group with work for the Golf Mark VI, Skoda, Bentley and Bugatti, working alongside the amazing Walter de Silva. And it was in January 2010 that you moved to Ferrari. And since then, you and your team have been continuously evolving the design language of the dream of Ferrari, whilst at the same time building a fully in-house design capability in the new design center at Marinello. And I'm guessing that must have felt a bit like a, a, a startup uh, situation. More models than for any other car manufacturer have been won, uh, have won Red Dot Design Awards. 14 distinctions between 2015 and 2019. And Red Dot Best of the Best, not once, but five times. Most recently for the Portofino, the Monza SP1, and in April this year, the iconic SF90 Stradale. And the Stradale is Ferrari's first series production plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Flavio, it is an honor to have you join in conversation with our host, Peter Zeck. Peter, if I, if I may start the ball rolling with a question to you can, you, can you tell us what it means to you to have had the chance to celebrate the Ferrari design team's truly remarkable design achievements through bestowing this unique title? Uh, for us, it was uh, a, a very uh, interesting thing that um, we could give the award to the Ferrari design team after we have given this award many years ago to Pininfarina design team. So we can see here the difference between uh, the work that Pininfarina did in the past for Ferrari and the way Flavio and his team lead the company and lead the car design into the future into a new totally new direction um, this the, this is has become a, a totally new company after they installed their own design department in, in uh, ferrari and for us this was uh, incredible to see uh, what kind of changes happened in during these times and uh, the success of flavio and his team is 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 Fantastic. So many red dots and so many best of the best, almost every year, best of the best. I, we know each other very well because we see each other at least once a year on stage on red dot. And only this year we have to, to do it in a different way, like this way. But uh, this is an incredible success. And I think it's uh, uh, fantastic for us to have such a good design team leaded by Flavio. Great. Fl Flavio, it, it, it strikes me that uh, you have obviously worked at many different types of brands, um, ranging from uh, brands where there are millions of users and drivers to brands where there are fewer users and drivers, although in their imaginations and dreams, millions of people follow your creations today. And I just wonder, it's, it's a curiosity on my part, 
Um, how do you, as a design director, create an opportunity to design for a new brand? Do you have to create like a tabula rasa in your mind? How, do you have to reject the learning that you have had in the past? How do you get into the spirit of the brand that you're working for now? How did you learn the brand of Ferrari? Well, <clears throat> my attitude has been always uh, to try to understand the, the DNA of the brand, first of all, and the, the, the formal language that is related to, to that DNA. So um, also when, when I was working in, in Germany, for example, my attitude was to understand what's the uh, best interpretation of for, for different brands. Every brand has a, its own identity and Ferrari has a very specific identity. At the beginning, not easy to, uh, let's say, to understand exactly the, the let's say, the, the, the parameters, I don't know how to say, the, the, all the uh, elements of the, the language. It took more or less one year to really understand, to deeply understand the identity of the brand. But my, my intention was to, first of all, to be respectful towards the tradition to try not to create, uh, let's say, a, a, a break uh, in, the, in, in the history, but evolve the brand into a new direction, very, let's say, modern, very, uh, yeah, modern, contemporary, but still very recognizable. And I think that the beauty of this brand is that uh, we follow the principle that form follows function, not really in the Bauhaus way. So. Mm -hmm really a necessary thinking that the form is a, a, an automatic consequence of the function or the respect of the function but we instead we we believe that we need an artistic approach and uh, that's why every ferrari is different even though perfectly recognizable but we don't we don't think that we have to follow a kind of pattern for for uh, each uh, each model of the range Instead, we think, we believe that the form of a new Ferrari must be really consistent with the meaning of the project and especially all the technical innovations, technical characteristics of, the, of each project. What, what, is, what is the progenitor or what creates the, the impulse yeah. for a new car? Is it a technical impulse? Is it a business impulse? Is it an artistic dream? How does that actually happen in reality? So if you're looking to 22 or 2023, what's happening now? Most of the time I say we never start from the, the blank page. So we start from the architecture of the car. This is a very important phase of the project where fortunately the designers of the design center, Ferrari Design Center are involved. Uh, so our word, our, our opinion about the package of a new Ferrari is determining, uh, which is something that doesn't happen everywhere because most, in most of the cases, designers are working on a package that is somehow defined by the let's say, technical, uh, technical constraints and, uh, and maybe platforms that are shared between brands and so on. In the case of Ferrari is different. So we have the opportunity every time to redefine the architecture of a car. Thinking about, not only about the, the let's say the technical requirements, so the performance, the fun to drive, the aerodynamics and so on, but also the beauty. That means the harmony, the, the proportions, the equilibrium of the car. This is fundamental because this is the base for a good design. Otherwise, yes. we have then to work to adjust, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, aspects of the, 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 regarding the proportions or the, the equilibrium that are not correct through, uh, let's say, treatments. And this is something that we don't want. Peter, what, what is your view on this, uh, this fusion of art and science, of creativity and technology? Have you some thoughts on that? You, yeah, you know, uh, from, from our experience, from also from other industries, we know that design never stands alone. And uh, uh, that's why it is very true what Flavio said, that it is very important that uh, you work together with the technicians. And, uh, of course, for design, one of the driving forces for design are technical developments, 
new materials. You know, design does not stand alone and they, you cannot just uh, grab some apples from a tree. You, you have to work with that what is, is possible. And, and of course, if you have a very strong uh, partner at your side, very good engineers at your side and uh, people who are as enthusiastic as the designers are, then the job is much better, much easier to do. Uh, so I think it's a good combination. You need to be an artist on one side, but you need to be also very logical on the other side. You know, you cannot just uh, create something like an artist on its own. You know, mm -hmm. you are also responsible in Ferrari, I guess, you are very responsible to the customers. You know, the, the brand does not belong only to the company and to the designers. The brand belongs sometimes more to the customers and what they expect. So, and this is the tricky business that uh, Flavio and his team, they have to, to handle with. And uh, okay, finally, also it's a company and they, make, they must make some money and they must, earn, they must make a good business. And uh, I don't know whether you know it, Michael, but uh, a Ferrari is the most profitable car in the world. And how can it be? It can only be because of the technology and uh, because of the fantastic design of Flavio and his team. Flavio, uh, thank can you, I, Peter. Flavio, yes. I think that Peter touched a very important point. This, this, this combination, I, I will say that Ferrari is a combination between science and art. So the, when, when I was explaining the beginning of a project, I was talking about the rational aspect. So the, the way we organize the components and the, the, all the elements of a car to be correct from the, let's say, uh, equilibrium or let's say, um, harmony point of view. Then there is another important part of our job that is really creative, that is artistic, where we try to interpret the uh, technical needs into a very uh, creative and sculptural way. So this is the, the way we, we work, combining rational with uh, emotional and passional aspects. Do you think, Flavio, there might also be a musicianship in design? Musicianship? Like musicianship. Like the, the quality of music, of musical composition. Well, I think, I think so. I always believe into, uh, let's say, links uh, uh, between the, the different arts. Even we are talking about the form of the sound in that case and not the form, a physical form. I think there are many uh, common characteristics. For example, the, the harmony of a song is based on the, let's say, on the chords that you create, that are the structure of the song Probably this is the um, a good way to represent the, the the main pillars of a project, the the the, the elements that are giving the um, the general structure to to a project. Then there is another part that is, let's say, the interpretation, the expression, all aspects that are linked to the sensibility of each uh, um, musician and each uh, designer as well. So. There are many, many links that we can find between music and art, between music and design. Flavio, you are, as, like me, we are enthusiastic fans of uh, Keith Jarrett. <laughs> and uh, we know that Keith, uh, he has two sides. He, sometimes he plays classical music and there he is bended into, into the structure. He has to just to replay something. And, uh, and, but on the other side, we love his concerts where he is improvisating uh, the music. So my question to you would be, uh, how much improvisation is possible for you if you create a new Ferrari? There is a lot of improvisation because as soon as the, let's say, the pillars of a project has been, uh, let's say, defined, then uh, there is the uh, team working together on a common vision, on a common structure. Of course, I have to give the, 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 the direction of the project, the, the vision. 
then everybody in a, in a certain phase of the project is uh, able to make his own interpretation. So I would say this, the, the structure is the same, but and the theme also is the same, but we can play around these themes, making um, variations, making different interpretations. The final, let's say, form of an object is the result of an interaction between the members of the team. And I would say it's similar to a jam session. In a jam session, normally you, there is, a, there is a group of musicians that are interpreting a song, for example, a jazz song. Uh, we, call, we call it a standard. Standard because it's yes. a, such a famous song that it becomes, becomes a standard. Perfect to, to be interpreted in different ways. And we know how many beautiful interpretations there are in the jazz, uh, let's say, uh, field uh, from different musicians. I would say this is similar to our work. Maybe there are also projects like, the, for example, the one-off projects that oh. are normally based on a technical base, on a platform that is normally a production car, but we make a completely different interpretation of the, the shape, both interior uh, and exterior. It's a good example of variations or different uh, researches based on the same, uh, let's say, structure, on the same base. So this, um, uh, sorry, uh, Peter, go on. Uh, uh, just to add something, uh, you know, you talked about the standards, and uh, uh, I know that uh, Flavio takes very often uh, the old uh, traditional Ferrari models as a kind of a, um, influence or as we could say in, in musical terms as a standard and then you create something totally new out of it with your team. Is that right? Yes, um, I think sometimes we can, uh, let's say, draw inspiration from elements of the, let's say, classic elements of the tradition. Sometimes we can make quotes of some yes. certain details, but it's important mm -hmm. to be, to the invention, the invention is such an important thing. We cannot stay, let's say, too much faithful to the tradition, otherwise we don't invent anything. We must, because normally I consider the tradition of a brand, the, let's say, it, it, its own uh, uh, vocabulary, its own uh, lessico, we say in Italian. So there are characteristic words, characteristic uh, ways of, of the expression that are belonging to a brand that in, let's say, over the years, define a specific identity. And this is the, this, this is the aspect, we call it meta-language, meta-language. Yeah, meta we work on the meta-language. And the question is how to evolve it, how to reinvent it. The, the idea of, a, of, of evolving a language is something that comes from outside of the language, but also from inside of it as well. And I wonder how you, sounds to me like you're more of a, a conductor of an orchestra or a conductor of a jazz band uh, than, than perhaps uh, maybe the traditional idea of a leader. And I'm sure there are many design directors or aspiring design directors listening to our talk today. And I just wonder, could you offer some thoughts on what sort of a leader you are and how important leadership has been in creating the in-house design team at Maranello? Well, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, if you, if you um, listen to certain piano concert with the orchestra, with the orchestra where the, the pianist is also the conductor. Yes. 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 And also, yeah, of good. course, the, the, the importance of the conductor is not, let's say, <laughs> guiding. It's not just in front. No, it's the preparation, it's the yeah. interpretation and the vision that the conductor wants to give. Then there are conductors that are all also belonging to the, to the let's say, group of artists that are performing during the performance. I would say 
I am part of the group because I sketch every day. Normally, I don't do that uh, in front of the others when, uh, when uh, especially in the first phases of the, the project, where I think it's important to give a vision, a direction, mm -hmm. but it's also important to, to leave freedom, to give freedom to everybody. And uh, otherwise, if I say, if I show what I'm sketching, what I'm transferring from my mind, from my imagination to, to, to a sheet of paper, I, I block the, 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 the creativity. Instead, instead I think uh, the, the design process at Ferrari is a pluralistic process. And this is the beauty of, a, of such a thing. I think there are realities, there are design studios where the leader is very present and maybe the, the designer uh, and the other members of the team are more executors. I think this doesn't lead to any, any good direction. Any, any, any let's say, uh, um, I think it's very important to create a, a, a situation where the stimuli are continuous and the interaction between uh, designers and, and all the members of the team are fundamental. But, but how do you come to the, to the final result of your work? Uh, who says, who, who gives the last tone and, and who says, that's it, now it's fine? Well, it's, uh, at Ferrari, there is a very, very good process. First of all, we have to say that there is a, a, a maturation period that is very important. This is a period where we can, assimil we say, assimilate, we can, we say, yeah. Met metabolize the, 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 the process of, gre of creation of a product. I, I'm not talking only about design, I'm talking about all the aspects, the product aspects, the engineering aspects, and so on. So normally the design process lasts um, 13, 15, 16 months. It depends on the projects. Uh, during this time, this period, there are many presentations. We start with presentations, on, let's say 2D presentations, sketches, renderings, then step by step, virtual models. Very often we present many, many different interpretations in 3D. And then there are also presentations in, uh, in, uh, in physical, with physical models. So it's, um, it's a process where there is an expansion of ideas at the beginning and there is step by step, a, let's say a converging process towards the, the, the best combination of elements that are, let's say, step by step defining the, the final shape of the car. Uh, in the presentations, normally uh, the, 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 uh, there are the directors uh, of the other um, departments, there is the, the, the CEO, Mr. Camilleri, there is the Vice President, Piero Ferrari, the son of Enzo, and sometimes also the President, the, our Chairman. So, and, uh, and this is, a, let's say, a very good process because when there is the perfect alignment of the vision of each one, then it means that we have found the right, the right direction. So normally I'm very happy when uh, uh, the, the, the proposal that I consider the best one is chosen because I think, uh, and it, normally it happens. Normally it happens that the <laughs> yes, most I know. proposal <laughs> is winning. I don't know if it is because I'm influencing the, the judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Flavio, can I ask a, another question then? Unless, Peter, you have a further reflection on that? No, no, us? it's okay. It's okay. I was, I was going to ask a question which might seem incredibly naive, so forgive me. But um, I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking about maybe companies other than Ferrari where the understanding of design at board level may not be as sophisticated or mature as it is at Ferrari. Um, and given that you have a, um, I think your uh, profit forecast for, or revenue forecast for this year is somewhere around 4 billion, you employ 4,200 people. Um, I just wonder, 
to what extent your role is justifying commercial value of design upwards in the hierarchy of the organization. That seems to be the task of many design directors who are fighting for design resources, uh, trying to educate and enable design to play a strategic role in the organization. Now, it seems very naive to ask Ferrari that question, but I just wonder how, how is design talked about at board level in the organization? I didn't understand your last um, sentence. Uh, so uh, uh, how, is, how is design spoken about uh, at board level in the organization? How, how do people perceive design at board level? Well, well, design is one of the, let's say, one of the fundamental aspects of a Ferrari. Uh, normally, we say that a Ferrari has mainly three, three important aspects. First of all, the technological innovation. Uh, second, uh, the, uh, let's say, the fun to drive. Yes. The thrill of driving. And then the beauty. So without one of these three characteristics, it's not a Ferrari. So the beauty is a very important uh, element, and uh, in every, uh, let's say, every director, every um, person that has um, an important role in the deciding role at uh, Ferrari knows is fully aware about the importance of the the beauty. So. That's why, fortunately, this is a company where there is a lot of delegation. So uh, <laughs> myself and the directors, the other directors are, let's say, experts, each one in, in his field. And we are, of course, um, our opinion is really very, very important. It is sometimes determining in, 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 in the moment where we have to take a decision. So, for example, during a presentation, if I say, look, this is the, the winner, this is the best interpretation we can, uh, we can do, normally I, I do it explaining why, because I think that the good design is, can be explained. So in a, in, even in a rational way, maybe even if this is the fruit of a, let's say, a creative process, uh, an emotional process, but I think you can always explain why that design is better than another one. Yeah, that's right. I guess the other side of that is that if the design is not, uh, if, if you're not able to explain it, then there is something lacking or something missing in that design. Looking to the future, Flavio, in, in fact, Peter and, and Flavio, Looking to the future, um, I suppose, and what's reasonable these days is a maybe a five-year window. I think 10 years is too far ahead to look nowadays. But say in looking to the next five years, what are your radars telling you is coming down the line in terms of design's role and how design might change? I'm thinking of the new technologies, digitalization, artificial intelligence. I'm thinking of changing demands. Maybe, maybe our current situation with COVID-19 is changing people's behaviours and wishes and desires. Uh, I just wonder, are there some reflections you might have about the next five years? Peter, maybe could I start with you on that? Oh, with me. I, I hope that the cars will not be too soon just electric because, uh, you know, Ferrari... Uh, shows the engine. You can always see the engine of the Ferrari and, uh, you know, the engine is the heart of the car. And if, it, if we would have one day only an electric engine with uh, out of 25 parts, so very simple thing. I mean, making an electric engine is not that sophisticated uh, challenge, uh, but making engines like the Ferrari engine now, this is a challenge. Uh, and, and many, many car manufacturers worldwide cannot, uh, cannot do the same job. You know, this makes a big difference. So that's why I hope that uh, electrified cars will just be a short episode. And we are waiting for the, you know, for, for the uh, fuel cell cars and for, for, for other uh, uh, car mm -hmm. technologies. 
where we can still maintain our sophisticated uh, knowledge of uh, creating good engines. And then those good engines need still a wonderful design around it, where they are packed into it, and, and, or where the design can help the engine to perform better. So this is my, my hope. I'm not sure whether this will be, become a reality, but uh, so far I can see that electricity in the car business is probably not really, really liked by so many people, well, especially by the governments, because it's an economical question. If all the, if, if all the uh, engines are produced just by one producer in one part of the world, uh, this is probably not what uh, many countries are looking for. And uh, for this reason, I, I think uh, we, we, uh, hydro hydrogen car uh, technology will be probably more the future than just electricity. Flavio, any, any thoughts that you'd like to offer on thinking I, I like, about the I, I like the, I like the, uh, the point of view of Peter that is very passionate about the Ferrari, let's say the, the typical sort of Ferraris. But in my opinion, I think we, it's, it's important to, to, let's say, open-minded uh, regarding the possible evolution of a brand. I think um, Ferrari must be uh, always open to new, uh, um, let's say, developments of the, the technology. And uh, the SF90 Stradale, for example, is, is a good example of a new a yes. car, a Ferrari that is the first hybrid supercar uh, is the first Ferrari that can uh, drive, let's say, 25 kilometers in electric mode. So perfectly uh, silent. But it's, I tell you, it's unbelievable when you see the car passing by, and which is silent, and at a certain moment you push the accelerator and you, you, you feel the, 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 the thrill <laughs> of the Ferrari engine. It's really beautiful. So, but I think that we have an opportunity uh, because every time we have the opportunity to uh, work around a new technology, a new innovation, and, in, and technological innovation, we, are, we have also the opportunity to, to be more creative. Normally, I don't know, for, for example, an, an example, when the radio uh, changed from the thermo, thermoionic valves to the transistors, and you remember there was a peak of creativity and it was fantastic for the design world to interpret new, let's say, to create new, new forms, new, also I would say new archetypes, and this should be our role. So the, 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 the challenge that we are facing now, especially here at the Design Center, is to define a new paradigm of the brand, or at least of certain pro products. Um, you know that we are working on new uh, hybrid Ferraris, and this is, the, the, this is an important challenge for us, especially because we can somehow redefine the architecture and the paradigm of, the, of our, our cars. Do you think that is the role that the Italian design masters of the 60s and 70s took? Was that their approach? Is, I mean, do you think they still have, you know, Achille Castiglione and Zomari, do you think those people are still relevant today? What they did is relevant? How they worked? Absolutely, yes. But they, they are always present in our day-by-day -day work because for me, they are, they, their lesson is unforgettable. Um, I don't know, for example, today I was watching the famous uh, hi-fi, the Castiglione hi-fi, the R R126. It's unbelievable. This, this has been designed in 1965. So when I was born, in the, this is still not only modern, but it's a, a continuous source of uh, inspiration. So and this is the, the, the interesting point is that these designers weren't interested about the tradition. They just wanted to create the new uh, archetypes of the modernity. This is the lesson that we have to learn uh, every day and not to forget. Because sometimes we, we I mean, we are in a, in, a, in a, I think that we are in a, a generation where unfortunately the, 
let's say the beauty, the, nost the, the, the nostalgic, uh, I don't know, uh, passion for, for the past is very present. We, we have to be very attentive about that. The tradition is important, but innovation and invention are very important as well. Yeah, it's a kind of a symbiosis of, of uh, tradition and innovation. If you, if you last too long in the tradition, then you get out of date and you are yeah. outdated. Uh, so then people don't take you serious anymore. But if you are able to com make a good combination out of the impact of the tradition and connect it with the innovation and, and new inventions, then you are leading into the future. And I think uh, those designers from the past, uh, they were really visionary. Uh, they were passionate about the new opportunities that uh, the world offered to them. And uh, sometimes today, I think uh, younger people uh, take everything so much for granted because everything is already so far developed and very well developed. But uh, uh, to have those good old designers as role models, I think this is very helpful for any creative person. Mm -hmm. We are at a, a moment in time, Flavio, where you are uh, handing over the battle of design team of the year to a new team. And uh, I wonder, there are two things I wanted to ask. Um, can you talk a little bit about why this title might be important to a company like Ferrari? And would you have any advice for whoever the lucky team is that's going to follow on from you in 2020? Well, when uh, we, we, let's say, we, we were informed about this, this award, I was really, I was struck because I didn't expect that. Uh, also because the, uh, the Ferret Design uh, Design Center is quite a new, uh, let's say, a new reality in, uh, at Ferrari. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary because we, we, I started, the, let's say, the creation of this uh, team uh, in uh, 2010. So I didn't expect that in a, such a short time. So it's the max, the, 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 let's say, the, the top recognition in the world for, for a team. And uh, when, I, when I was taking part on the, let's say, the, the ceremonies uh, where Peter was the presenter, and I was always thinking, oh, how beautiful is this award? Uh, looking, seeing the, the, the teams on stage and saying, maybe one day it will happen to, 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 to our team. That is, would be the, the best recognition for everyone. And it happened. So I'm still very surprised and very, still very, <laughs> very, let's say, proud about that. And I think, but I think my, my, the recommendation to the, the winners of this, this year is, of course, to be proud about this award, but uh, also to, I, I think, I didn't think so much about the award. I, th I thought I spent my time uh, working on the new challenges, on the new projects, and always thinking that design is a, is a never ending process of, uh, let's say, of improvement, a continuous improvement. And we cannot, let's say, be, uh, we say in Italian, sit on the, on the awards. We have to be, uh, to work hard and to think about better challenges, better, better results. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you. For yeah, this is exactly, I think, Flavio, you described it perfectly. This is exactly our motivation for those kind of awards, uh, they, sh they should not set an end to your work. They should inspire you and, and motivate you uh, to go further and to continue in this way. So this is just uh, a, a feedback at a very special moment in the, in the career of a design team where we want to, to tell you this is the right way to do it. And uh, so we like to encourage the design teams 
to continue like this. And this, is, this makes us proud if the design team after that even gets better and better. And, and we are still looking for that team that we can give the award twice. This ha does not ha uh, happen in the past and, uh, until today, but uh, I'm sure it will happen one day that we will have the first team that will receive this award for the second time. Uh, because, you know, they took their challenge and they went further and made a good job. So I'm happy to hear this from you, Flavio, that you will do that. And I hope the incoming team will do the same, you know. So, uh, so that makes me really happy. Yeah. Very good, very good. Flavio, I have to ask you, you've, I mean, I'm sitting in lockdown in uh, my little uh, Airbnb. I'm not at home in London at the moment. Uh, because of the, the COVID, but behind you, you have got a beautiful background, I guess, of leathers for the cars. Is that right? Yes. Is that what's behind you? Yes. Uh, I would say, I, I would like to say that this is my office, but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the tailor-made department. This it's is very beautiful. Be beautiful ah, room where we say normally we welcome our uh, best clients, the collectors, and so on. The, the, the clients that want to wants to uh, make their car very original uh, by using special materials, special colors, liveries, and and whatever. Fantastic, Flavio. Thank you very much indeed today, uh, Peter. Obviously, I think uh, to have a chance to get the two of you to talk together is a great privilege, and I thank both of you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have yeah. a great day. And uh, no, you did Thank a good you. job. Thank you, Flavio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.